G'day everybody, Andrew Marr here and welcome to the first edition of The Blueprint for Season 2013. Sal was proudly brought to you by our friends at Hyundai. Fantastic to have them on board. The start of a new season brings not only a new captain, new hopes, but also a new coach uh, to the club. And we are very fortunate today to be joined by none other than the man himself, Mick Mouldhouse. We'll say good day to him and have a chat very, very shortly about the season to come. Remember, if you want to get involved with the show, you can send in your questions and comments via Twitter at the hashtag the blueprint and we'll endeavour to get to as many of them as we possibly can. Joining me once again in the co-host chair, former champion of the club, former skipper of the club, Mark McClure Sellers, welcome to 2013 in the blueprint. Thanks Andy and uh, looking forward to it, uh, looking forward to an exciting year. New coach, a whole bunch of new kids coming through, uh, I went down and watched them train a couple of times, they look very, very sharp. Uh, we'll see what happens mm. Thursday night. It'll be great. Looking we are forward to it. looking forward to it enormously as a collective group, obviously, and the man who's got our expectations uh, up and about is the coach, Mick Mouldhouse. And it's great to see him in navy blue, and it's great to have you on the show, Michael. Thanks for coming in. Andy, pleasure. Sellers, uh, how are you, mate? Yeah, good. good. You've good. been through it so many times, the opening round of the season, the launch into another campaign. Um, what, what is the overwhelming sense within yourself? Is it anxiety? Is it anxiousness? Is it, is it excitement? What is it? Well, there's a touch of excitement that's, that started way back in October. And as you get closer, the, you've, you, the interesting thing about round one is we've had six months to think about it. Mm. We've watched every detail we possibly can of our opponent, and yet we're only going to get seven or eight days for our next opponent. Mind you, we've done a lot on each of the sides, but you get to a saturation point where you say, bring the game on. Mm. We are, we're ready to play football. And our boys are ready to play football, and that's the great thing about it. We've trained well this week, trained with some passion, uh, I'd like to think that we've left a fair bit there for, for match day because there is a tendency, first round, to lose up, uh, use up a lot of energy, which mm. you don't need to do. Mm. So we've just stayed pretty much focused in on, on the, uh, just on the mechanics of, of the roles they have to play as opposed to any type of preconceived idea of what we're going to win by or mm. if, we, if we're going to win or that sort of stuff. So take the heat out of that and put the pressure back on your role. Yep. Nick, what attracted you to Carlton? Uh, the people, the club. I, I, you know, don't forget, I'm a VFL sure. a person, so therefore Carlton have been part of that all my life. Yep. In regard to uh, uh, when I was in Ballarat as a young kid, Carlton were part of that system, and, and then coming through playing for St Kilda, Carlton were part of that system, and coaching Carlton were part of that system. Uh, some good friends have been uh, through the club. Yep. Uh, probably the first one that I can remember going through the club that I had a really close association with, a lot of people might remember, is, is the Spider, Val Perivic. Went, yeah, no, well. went to primary school with him for a little while, then we moved on different primary schools, or I did. Then we went to secondary school together, and then we played for the uh, North Ballarat Football Club together. Went down to St Kilda together, and he made his, his uh, treks to uh, Carlton. So I watched there. And I think along the way, the clubs, particularly Richmond, had a very, very healthy rivalry with, with Carlton. So when, when the opportunity arose, Greg Swan there, Shane O'Sullivan, a number of players that I'd actually coached with the, Austra with the Australian Irish series. It was a real, it was, it's one of those things where I've always, when I've moved clubs, and I've moved quite mm. frequently. You're yeah, not bad at it. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> um, but it's been a long time <laughs> through that, so I don't know every year, but, but, there's, there's, a, there's not a reluctance, but there's, there's this uncertainty. Yeah. And I really have got to say, to go into the Carlton rooms, I had no uncertainty. Now, maybe it's because I'm a bit older, and, but I, it's because I knew people. And, do, and I really do mm, rate the club. Do we have the talent? I don't think anyone makes the eight by accident. No, they don't. And by definition, I don't think anyone who finishes out of the eight is by accident. You've, you must weigh up the pros and cons of the side. Um, I don't think there's the perfect side. No. And I would say, I'll put my head on the chopping block now and say that I reckon the bottom sides will improve 15% this year, and I reckon the top sides may go around at 2 or 3%. Hence, there's going to be a real saturation of sides vying for that eight. Are we good enough? I think, and as I said to the play group today, I don't care who's out of the, out of the side, because I haven't seen a side yet win mm -hmm. with someone in the grandstand participating. So in other words, my best 22, run down the race, regardless of who's out of the side. So the best 22 will play this, this Thursday night, and if we lose one or two, that's going to be the best 22 to run down the race the following week because you've got to give the players that confidence to think 
they are part of our best site. So are we good enough? Yes, we are. How far can we go? Well, it's how far some of the other sides go as well. That's, that's going to be, by definition, winning enough games. A lot of your teams have had that great lead-up man, the conduit between defence and attack. You know, Travis Cloak at Collingham, Mitch White at the West Coast Eagles. They're that type of player. Um, Sam Rowe, Levi Casbold have been the key forwards that you've used a lot during the NAB Cup campaign this year. Who is, do you need to find a player to fill that role for you? Have you got somebody in mind? Or is this going to be a different... No, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll use a, a soccer a term. You've got to have the strikers. Mm. And uh, history shows that you get by with medium-sized forwards occasionally. Mm. But when, when the crunch comes, you need someone to stand up and take a big catch, kick the big goal. Um, if you've got two there, and if, or you've got three, well... I'd say that three puts massive pressure. OK, you might say, with ball to the deck, run away. No, have three good players that can actually get to the yeah, crumbing. Yeah. But um, Levi Casbolt has, has finished off last year in a, in a high fashion. We want him to move on from that and, uh, and, and be a consistent player. Yep. I think uh, Sean Hampson, he surprised me. Um, I, I watched him and seen him more as a ruckman than a forward, but now I look at him and I say, well, I think he's, I think he's both because he's got a... He did one of the best chases through that NABS Club series. Mm -hmm. I've seen of a big bloke. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't even think he even caught the bloke. No, he didn't. But the no. simple fact that he had his heart and soul in catching that player, to me, that's a great competitor. Uh, Sam Rowe, I think, will be a real bonus for the club this year because as much as he's been a journeyman, I think at 25 he's probably come to a, come to a period of his life where, um, and I won't speak on his behalf to say that every day is a bonus, but he, he'll, he'll tell you that he knows he has to make it this year. And that means you've got this competitiveness in him. Mm. Now, can we play those three or four together? That's going to depend on circumstance. It's going to depend on the game. It's going to depend on our opponent. It's going to depend on the weather. But I have no doubt that those players will feature strongly for the way we want to play this year. You've got to have strikers in, in, in Australian rules football. Mm. Uh, yes, get away with it occasionally. But rarely do you get away with it winning premierships. Mm -hmm. Jeff Garlett and Eddie Betts, we've seen a bit of them sort of roll higher up the ground, particularly at centre square, centre bounces, which has been, I think, a delight for a lot of Carlton supporters. Is this part of what you're going to bring to the mix? Are you going to roll a few more through there? Do you see these two in particular as being usable in that, oh, in that part of the Well, that, that's a freak goal. I mean, that's just it's rugby stuff, isn't it? Chip the ball forward and get it yourself. Uh, that's not going to happen every day of the week. But these two players add uh, pace, ball getting power, uh, they had the smarts. Mm -hmm. you, you, midfielders have got to be, you know, I don't want to sort of knock the, the men's department on the back end, but the, the mids have got to be very, very sharp mm. in the mind. They've got to be able to go from offence to defence very, very quickly. They've got to be able to sum things up very quickly. They've got to be able to get their hands on the football and let it, st let it stick. We, we had the ball against Brisbane in our hands as often as they did, and yet we got smashed, not, not, got smashed yeah. because we didn't control the ball. Mm. There's two, two players that I believe can actually add to our midfield. Let me ask you a question. What are the non-negotiables that are seriously a part of your coaching life for a team? Uh, Self-sympathy. So in other words, something goes bad that I, it's all about me, so you hollow out. Mm. Um, thinking that someone else is going to do it. So I sit back... Never assume. Never assume, but not only never assume, if it is to be, it's up to me. Correct. Um, I just think that never. I, I say process. When the final siren goes, that's when the end of the game. That's that's the game finish. Mm. Not not five minutes before, twenty minutes before, not at half time. Stay in the game. Don't embarrass the football club. Don't embarrass your teammates. Don't embarrass your, your loved ones. I mean, it's not about you. It's a, you've said that a lot throughout this preseason. You want this to be about the group. But just one indulgent question, if you if you can. How driven are you to? Might prove some people wrong might be the wrong slant on the question, but there were things said about your capacity from a physical perspective mm. to do this job when you exited Collingwood. Are you in the back of your mind somewhere got it in, in there that you know that was wrong and that you are keen to prove those people I've got wrong? nothing to prove that way, and I think going back in the past is just so so uh, dismal mm. to look, look at the past. I, I look at the, when I take a job on, I take the job on to get the best out of people around me and give give them the opportunity to display leadership and ownership and go forward. I'm not interested in going back. The past is the past. I'm a, I'm a great believer in the history. 
you learn from the history, but that sort of history has got no influence on what we as a group want to do at Carlton. Yep. And and the, to me, it's just it's nonsense to even even go back yep. through that because there's there's so much life in front of us, and. I've got a wonderful group of people. Don't underestimate the people at, at Carlton. This is not about the, 20, the 42 players. It's not about um, the coaching panel. This is about Carlton in general. I, I'm, the, the staggering thing was when I walked in that door, the humbleness of the, the staff and the people around me was, was a shock. Mm. Because, you know, let's face it, Carlton have always been associated with if yep, things are going okay. Yep. People, the people in that office, Everyone knows their role and plays their role, and, and I say that not only as a footballer, but as a as a as a someone in there, if it's membership or after sponsorship, those people just go 100 mile an hour, and they mm -hmm. only do everything to support you. And I'd like to think that we, as a football department, help support them. So um, I'm not interested in the past whatsoever about what people say because I'm only one small fraction of of the of the, of the total. And the moment you start to think you're bigger than anyone else, I, I think you're in the wrong game for the wrong reasons. And we, we just got to go through it together. I want to ask you one question. What have you done to Robert Walsh? What well, have I, you done to him? Did you belt him? Did you jump on him? Did you kick him? I probably should <laughs> Or maybe he did that to you. No, no, I probably should have. But no, I, I find, you know, Rob, Robert is a uh, Hall of Fame. I, I, like I think he's a legend. Of the, I think he's yeah. a legend at Carlton and stuff. Funny enough, I've never had any problems with Robert Walsh face to face. Hmm. Really? Actually, he's an unusual bloke. Face to face. Face, <laughs> face to face. I've never had Robert Walls say anything to me. So what he says away from mm. me, um, I, I don't hear. I only hear about. Yeah. He's actually unusual. <laughs> he was here. He's very unusual, as you know. He was a very hard man as a coach, I can assure you. Now, before we go, oh, and we are running out of time, a call out to our fans. If you haven't signed up to become a member, do so today. It's a really important juncture of the club's history. You need to get 50,000 members to get more home games at the MCG. It's a pivotal time. There are a variety of packages, of pack, packages on offer. So give the club a call, 1300 Carlton, or visit the website, iamcarlton.com.au. One last question. Mm. Richmond have been so hyped in this game, there's so yeah. much expectation on them. How do you do you use that at all? Is that something that do you mindful at all of what's on the line for Richmond and how you can address that with your group, or do you just well, focus do, purely on your own group? Well, we do we do analyse our opponents. There's no question about that. But what what happens in their rooms? I don't know. I'm not privy to what happens in their rooms. Is the hype really genuine? Is it is it from the media? Is it sparked by the media? And and that therefore Damien has got no hope of controlling that because yep. you can't control the media. But and having said that, you've got to look after your own backyard and you've got to look after what, happened. what what you can control, you can control. Now, you might say, well, Richmond are your opponents. Yes, we can to a degree control our opponents. It's how long you control them for mm. and it's how long they can control us for. So the hype about the game, it's going to be a fantastic start to the season. Mm. Let's face it, you've mm. got two sides that people are talking about making the eight. Well, one game doesn't make a season. But it's a very, very good small step going towards that mountain. Well, as we go to air tonight, uh, it's only a tick over 24 hours away and we can't wait for that. That's all we've got time for on today's show. We'll be back for another edition of The Blueprint in round three on the 11th of April at 6.30pm. Mick, it's been great to have you on the program. Thanks for joining us been a pleasure. on and the show. I hope he enjoys our club, which is more yeah. the point. Yeah. Uh, because uh, for the future of his, uh, what the, your tenure especially. Yeah. Everybody looks better in navy blue cellars. We've been saying Absolutely. that for a long time. Absolutely, should have wore one myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, enjoy your footy. Uh, until next time, bye for now.